going to be looking at the JavaScript library built by Harvest called Chosen. And Chosen will take your drop down list and turn them from this into something like this, where you can then type in and look up your options from the drop down list. It also supports some multiple selects, so where you can select multiple items, it'll turn it into something like this, where you can have multiple items selected. And similar to our previous episode using a JavaScript library, I'm going to pull from the railsassets.org to install our chosen library. And because this application is also using Bootstrap, I'm also going to add in the Rails Assets chosen Bootstrap. Be sure to run Bundle and restart your Rails application. Next, within your application JS file, you'll need to add the required chosen. And then also in the application CSS file, you'll need to add required chosen. But if you are using the bootstrap, then you can just simply have chosen bootstrap in there. And next, within one of the views, I want to make a drop down to where I can select one of my users. And then we can edit that user based on that selection. So we'll create a simple select tag. And I'm just going to call this users. And then we'll have this options for select. And then we'll take our users and then you can pass in a map where you put in the user's full name and then the user's ID. So this will be what is displayed and this will be the value of that select option. And then we can give a class chosen select and we'll use this class chosen select in our JavaScript so that whenever we have this class, then it'll be initialized by the JavaScript to show the chosen dropdowns. So back in our JavaScript, we can create a document on turbo links load. And within this function, we can enter in the dot chosen select. So it'll pick up that class and then simply just call chosen on here. So if we navigate to the page that has that dropdown, you'll see that it's automatically initialized. And now we can start typing in and doing our real time search. So next we want to make this drop down. So whenever it drops it down, it'll actually display that user form below so we can edit its information. So to do that, I'm going to add in a extra item onto this view and specifically on the drop down select on each one of the select items, we want to add in a data attribute. So within the array, we can call data, then pass in a hash. And we're just going to call this a URL, and then the edit user path for that user. If we refresh our page now, we can inspect the elements here and we can actually see what has gone on behind the scenes. So for each one of these select options, we now have this data attribute with the URL to edit that user. So at the bottom of our view that we have our display dropdown, we'll have this div tag with the ID of user form. And then back in the JavaScript, we can chain a function onto this chosen called change. And this will basically just allow us to have a function. And then we're going to set our user equal to the option selected and pass in this. So it's referencing back to the chosen dropdown. And then we can get the data attribute URL that we entered in into each one of our options. We can then call get script. We'll make an Ajax request back to our application with the user URL. And then in our edit.js.erb, we can call our user form and then just render the partial form. And before we go too much further, let's have a look at our application. And specifically, I want to look at our different models that we have configured. So the first one is a user and a user has many user pets. And the user also has many pets through the user pets. If we look at the pets, the pet has many user pets and has many users through users pets. We can then look at our user pet model and it just simply belongs to the user and belongs to the pet. So basically, whenever we edit one of our users, we want to be able to assign different pets to that user. And for those curious how we set up the pets, I'm using simple form within this application and you'll see that the chosen select works just as well. So here on this line, I have an F association and I reference to the pets and I make this a select with a multiple true. And then with the input HTML, I simply have the chosen select class. So going back to our application now, we can select one of our users. And then you'll see that the form automatically pops up. However, if you look down at the bottom, we have our pets, but then we have a couple selected. However, it's not giving us the chosen dropdown. If we go to our users index, and if we edit one of these users, you can see that the chosen dropdown does work. So we can simply add in as many of these as we need. And we can also delete them and save them. And the changes persist. 
However, the reason why it did not show up when we select our user from the dropdown, because the server generated JavaScript, entered in the multi-select, however, it already executed the JavaScript code that loaded the chosen. So within our JS.ERB, we'll also need to add the chosen select chosen again, because this will reinitialize or initialize the chosen dropdowns that have just been added from our render in the previous line. So going back to our application, we can now select one of our users, and then you'll see immediately that we are using the chosen dropdown for our server generated JavaScript. And we can select these and update them as we need. And if your chosen initialization does tend to get more complicated, then you are able to extract this over into its own function, just so you don't have to reinitialize everything and have a bunch of duplicated code everywhere. So we can just create a new function. We'll just call this chosen init, and then we'll remove the content from our Turbolinks load. And we'll just move that up into the chosen init. But then in the Turbolinks load, call our chosen init, and then it'll initialize just the same. We can also come back into our edit.jsierb and do the same thing where I'll just comment this out and then we'll call chosen init and it should all still work the same. So back in our view, we can go back to our home page. We see that we still have our chosen select. We can select one of our users and still initialize the chosen within our user form. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.